Apple. This right here is a 2013 Retina MacBook Pro. Yep, this is a MacBook. Apple's known for making their laptops pretty thin, uh, fairly light, but back in the day, that wasn't the case. Because believe it or not, in the 90s, people couldn't really make laptops that thin. So I have a laptop from 1995 that will show you just how thick these laptops were back in the day. All right, watch out guys. <clears throat> this is a Macintosh PowerBook 190. And well, usually I would have the lid closed and then I'd open it to reveal the computer. But as you can see, the hinge on this computer is looking a little bit sad. If we bring the camera in closer here, you can see exactly what the problem is. It's just completely stuffed, the hinge. And you can see bits of the hinge are actually like jotting out well beyond where they should. Even if we look around the back, you can see that, well, bits of the hinge are coming out the back as well and they're scratching the lid. So obviously this guy needs surgery fast and we're going to be taking this thing apart and we're going to be trying to fix this hinge right here. Also, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fix this issue, but the trackpad here is also a little bit weird. Uh, this button, you can't press it unless you push on the trackpad. And only then you can click it because, yeah, this is broken as well. So there's some stuff wrong with this computer. We're going to attempt to pull this thing apart and fix it and try and restore it. And well, let's see how hard it really is because I know these things are a pain in the ass to work on. So basically, I'm just going to be following some random YouTube tutorial. You guys are going to watch me try to repair this and we're just going to we're just going to have a jam. We're just going to try and fix this thing up and uh, let's just see how it goes. To protect the computer from the surface as we do this repair, we're going to bring out the silicone mat. All right, so before we uh, start repairing this, I believe we do need to take a few things out. So if we go to this side right here, I don't know what this thing is, but we're going to pull it out and see what it is. Okay, so here we have this thing here. Um, there's a little arrow that pulls up here. So, sh oh, there you go. That, that clip goes in and then, oh, uh, there's all these cracks on the bottom here as well. Chill, Lord. If I push this little lever up, then I think, there we go we can take the floppy drive out. And if I move this up just a little bit, we can slide this out. And yep, here is the floppy drive. All right, here's the problem with these vintage computers. They are very brittle and things just break on them. I don't know where that came from, but that just broke off of somewhere. Yeah, this thing's gotta be repaired. So we can sort of bring this down and look, look down upon it here. So these obviously aren't Phillips head screws, so we're gonna have to go in here and find the right bit for the job. Okay, looking at these screws, these look like torque screws. So we're gonna take this one right here, a T8. And that's, oh, that's actually the right size. So there we go, first one we got, Torx T8. That is the screw that you're gonna need to get into here. And let's chuck it in here. And I believe we're just gonna start the disassembly process with the computer up like this. I don't know how bad this is to do, but it's the only thing we can do without absolutely destroying the hinge. So let's just start taking this thing apart. Um, if we pull this back up here. Oh, wow, that, that's a long ass screw. All right, so we're gonna have to actually get those screws out either by unscrewing a bit more. Someone, someone's probably been in here. Look how, look how absolutely cracked this area is. Oh, there we go. All right, two out of three screws out. Now let's go for number three. All right, this is not gonna be pretty. There we go. Have to give it a little little tap and then it comes out because uh, it was pretty stuck in there and I don't think I would have been able to really reach in and grab it, but there we go, that's screw number three. See if we can move this little bit of the hinge out of the way. You know, it's guts are spilling out everywhere. And here we go, now the keyboard's lifting up and... Here's where we gotta be really careful. Now for a while, I actually gotta be really careful here so I don't like destroy the ribbon cable for the keyboard or like snap any clips or anything or even this thing's getting in the way so this is going to be a little hard. We basically need to just unhook this under here because it hooks in from the back here. So we just need to get that out. So in the video that I'm watching the guy just kind of lifted it up and it just kind of came out. This one does not seem to want to really budge. Oh there we go you just have to pull on it just ever so slightly but not too much to break it. Oh, you can hear things like that spring sound when you're like flicking a spring, you can hear that. Never a good sound on these things, jeez. 
there it is that's the keyboard it's folded flat uh so now we're kind of into the computer so we just kind of work out really how to get into the actual hinge here i don't know if i actually needed to take this off but hey we get to take a little look sees into the computer so oh actually we do need to take this off because i'm gonna also attempt to fix uh this issue here with the trackpad button all right so here we have these connectors here i just gotta work out how to get these up and out um without breaking them gonna probably need one of these tools right here uh i'm gonna see if i can try and lift this bit up all right so it's like i got i got one side of this connector up we just have to get the other side up there we go now that one's free okay now we just need to get this side getting into this little nook here is gonna be absolutely terrible it didn't oh never mind there we go and just like that the keyboard's free we can actually give this a little bit of a cleaning afterwards i can uh, feel some keys are sticking a little bit so oh no you can see all the dust and hair and stuff come out of here as i'm pressing these keys outside of the housing um, yeah, I'll definitely try vacuuming this out, uh, get an air compressor and just blow some of this dust out. Okay, so now we gotta get this palm rest slash trackpad up, and I can see the bottom housing here starting to lift up. So, I may be able to just start pulling this up. Actually, this entire side here is coming up as well. Ah, there we go. Is that the sounds of failure or success? And I think that's the sounds of success. See this bit right here? I think we're gonna get this under. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I hate that sound. Oh, dear lord. Okay. This is falling apart on us. Oh my god. Let's not destroy the trackpad. Uh, fun fact, this is actually one of the first laptops with a trackpad, or at least an earlier model of this one. Anyways, let's not screw this up. These ribbon cables are getting twisted here, and we just need to get this unplugged. You don't want to pry on these too hard, or else you will destroy the connector. And now the right side. Is that enough? Oh, I feel like that's enough. Maybe not. We'll pull that up just a little bit more. There we go. That should be enough. Okay. We need the left side just a little bit more. Go, 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 go. Come on. Get out. Yes. Okay, it's free. All right, let's, um, let's look at this housing real quick. Okay, let's look at this uh, mess that is the trackpad setup. What is that? What what is that? It's like a stick. Someone someone tried shoving a stick in here. No, this is a what is this is a skewer. What what is this doing in here? All right, let's let's just put that aside. Let's put this entire computer aside just for a second. Oh, uh, here we go. A plastic piece that's broken. Yeah. Brittle plastic. What can I do? Let's focus our attention now on. Oh, this. What on earth happened here? So, okay, so what, what's happened to the button? I think, yeah, the button has just come loose after years. Um, yeah, you can see the screws here, so these screws are what kept it in. Um, they, that's just straight up snapped off. So, what this is going to need... Oh, look at that, look at that. So that's how the clicking mechanism works. So what we're actually going to have to do is basically super glue these two bits back on and then we'll have a working trackpad button. I'll fix that in a bit. You can see all these tiny little bits of plastic, just things that have snapped off because the plastic's brittle, there's not much I can really do about that. So now that we know what's wrong with the trackpad, let's try fixing the rest of the laptop or more or less the hinge. There's definitely a bit of corrosion on the battery now. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to jinx myself too much, but so far this hasn't been too bad of an experience. Uh, I've done harder repairs than this. Yeah, a lot of this can just scrape off which is if you just use this little plastic card right here. And then what you do is you just get your vacuum cleaner, you come in, you just suck it up. Oh, so that thing I tried to get out earlier was the battery. Um, and if we look on the side here, you can see some white. You know what this means? Battery's corroded, man. Well, that's fantastic. This entire segment right here. Oh, okay. All right. So we can just we can just kind of lift up the ba Oh, good. L oh, no. Oh, God. All right. Hold on. That is a battery. Look at that mess. That is all just corrosion. All of that, that's, that's battery leakage over the last, like, 30 years. Like, I do want to keep this little plastic bit here, but that's a part of the battery, and, uh, yeah. 
I don't know, man. Like, I want to keep this plastic bit on the edge of the laptop because it really does complete it, but jeez, I don't know if I can. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon... <laughs> Guys, try not to cringe. Uh, there's going to be no replacement batteries available for this, so... A lot of this is just completely uh, useless anyway, so it's best to just get rid of everything here. Pretty much all we're really going to do is just get in here and just scrape- oh, there we go. That's the pins for the battery that's coming off. But, you know, like I said, the chances of me finding a replacement battery for this thing that works is pretty much slim to none. So, I'm not too concerned about the battery pins. Vintage Mac owners, you must be absolutely cringing at me right now. That's the entire pin. See that? I knocked off the entire pin. But it was probably so badly corroded anyway that it's probably unusable regardless. Yeah, so the right thing to do would actually be to get some isopropyl alcohol and just clean everything. Uh, I can't do that right now because I don't have any isopropyl alcohol on hand. So what I'm going to do instead is just compromise with you guys and we're just going to scrape all this off. And we can see, yeah, it has corroded pretty badly onto the board. Really surprised that this still works. <laughs> In better news, I actually slotted the trackpad back in, so now that's sitting better in the housing. And uh, all I need to do is just glue this back on and it'll work perfectly. So, off to get the sip glued. Whoosh! So after looking it up, the fate for this battery is sealed. I'm going to split this down the middle, remove all the battery guts, glue it back together, and there's just going to be a nice little dummy battery that'll fit into this cavity. All right, so while this uh, trackpad's out here, we're just gonna clean this up here with a... Wait, I feel like that's another YouTuber's catchphrase. Anyway, let's get cleaning. Take this and, you know, while the trackpad's out, we might as well clean it up just a little bit. Really get those edges that you can't normally reach. All right, now we are, check that out. That is pretty damn clean. So in order to put this trackpad back in, we're just going to have to lift this up, get this out of the way. Okay, so there are some little notches in the trackpad here. So what we basically want to do is put that under here. And then we just want to line it up with those notches and boom, it just sits in there. And now for the button, uh, we need to just super glue these screw, uh, these little screw mounts back onto here. That's usually what snaps on all these computers with really terrible plastic. I've had to fix two Dell laptops now with the exact same problem except on the hinges. We have a little friend I like to call Super Glue. And uh, yeah, we all know what Super Glue is. I'm just gonna go and glue this thing back down. Let's get some tissues ready just in case I stuff this up. So we're just gonna take some Super Glue. I'm gonna put it on the top here. Same with this side. And we just press down, and now we just hold for a bit. Yeah. How's your day, guys? How's your day going? Mine's going pretty good. I'm just waiting for this uh, clicker to glue here. So I reckon I just gotta hold this for a few minutes. And you can see already, even after like a minute or two, of pressing it down. You can see that the button's pretty much fixed. I can do this, show you. It's fixed and it clicks perfectly. So I'm not gonna hold up like that for too long. We do need this to keep drying, so I'm gonna put this aside. All right, so here I am taking the keyboard outside and giving it a much needed dusting. An air compressor was used on this, but while I was waiting, I just used a little handheld air dootlet thing that I have. Remember that battery that exploded everywhere? Well, I'm gonna crack this thing open, take all of the exploded components out of it, clean it up, and then we'll have a nice little dummy battery to slot back in the computer. And some of those plastic bits that are flying off were never found again. That was easy. Oh yes it was. Oh, let's see what horrors await inside. Yo, check it out! That's the latch that keeps the battery attached to the laptop! Oops. You really dropped it. Alright, cool. Let's see if we can reassemble that later.
Then I came up with a really good idea. What if I use a vice to hold the battery, but not crush it, but just to hold the battery as I crack it open? The front isn't screwed. These actually look like bits of dynamite. I wonder why they exploded. Yeah, I should probably point out here, um, don't do this guys. This is like really dangerous because batteries explode. Just just don't do it, man. Now how to get these batteries out. I really tried every method, but just ripping them out is really the only way to go at this point. Will they explode? I don't know. Keep watching to find out. But if they do, uh, GG, well played I guess. Oh look, a screwdriver. Putting metal objects that can puncture a battery? Yeah, great idea. Don't do this guys. If you guys are wondering why this segment is a voiceover, this is why. And here's the result. This is the battery in its current state. I've cleaned most of it up, but really this is probably the best I'm really going to be able to do. Uh, this inside part doesn't really matter anyway because I'm going to be gluing this shut. So it basically becomes an empty shell that you can just slot into the computer and it fills up the space and completes the outside. It also has the added benefit of being hollow, so you can put all of your valuables inside of here and then put it inside of your laptop. What do you mean they're just going to take the laptop? So we have piece number one here, which is uh, this right here. I think this is the only piece I was able to really salvage. All the other parts are just way too small and kind of got absolutely destroyed, either by the battery or me trying to pry this thing open. But it doesn't matter as long as this front part is okay. That's really all that matters to be honest, and quite frankly, I did a pretty good job preserving that at least. Blue tack will hold it in place. Of course. Of course. Yes. This is how to this is how to do things. Okay, now that's aligned. We can go ham with the glue. Okay, so that basically just sits in there, like that basically just sits in between these two lines here and you just push on that to open the battery. So I think we just keep that slotted in there, glue it together, uh, and that should just that should just sit well. Alright, here we go. Alright, let's not screw this up. Oh yeah, I realize I'm gonna have to go kinda quick because the super glue dries fast. Alright, let's be a little speedy with it, but not too bad. Slow down around here, we don't want to uh, glue the little thing clip back in, uh, meaning we won't ever be able to get it out of the computer. And now it's stuck. I think we've just ran out of super glue doing this, which means we're gonna have to get this right, come on. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Now we take this, whoop, wrong way, wrong way, and we just slam this on. Alright, we just slam this on. And I think there will definitely be enough glue in there to keep it down. But to help with the gluing process, uh, we're gonna have to get a paperweight to weigh this down. Something that is, uh, that I'm not gonna use or find any use for. Something that's a little bit useless that we can use as a paperweight. So I have an Apple TV here uh, that we're gonna use. 
Uh, I think this will make a really great paperweight. Alright, so we've got the paperweight on top of the battery. Uh, this is going to dry and then uh, hopefully this will be a good battery to put in. Actually, I don't think we have enough paperweights on uh, this battery, so let's get a second Apple TV and let's uh, put it on. There we go. Now we've got a lot of paperweight on this battery, meaning that it's going to dry really evenly. Yeah. So I've been trying to do some advanced research here to figure out how to replace the screen on a PowerBook 190, and I couldn't really find anything except for this web page here, this random page from Mac Specialist, which should tell me how to do it. Um, so we're going to be following this, uh, it's underneath some parts. As you can see here, we've got this rubber bit, these labels, and I think we just take these off to remove the screen, so let's give this a shot. Alright, don't mind the background noise, it's a new day, we're going to be trying to remove the bezel from the screen, and uh, yeah, let's just see how we're going to be able to do it. So from the one resource I was able to find online, the screw should be underneath here, 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 and here. Yeah. So really, I just need to work out how to remove these things without, like, essentially breaking them. I guess the best thing I can really try doing is just getting my fingernail on there and just, yep, lifting them up and... Oh, I was right, I dropped it. Good job, that's never gonna stick back now. Okay, that took ages to find. I found it. Uh, the good news is that these aren't sticky, so I just have to really just shove it back in and... We've got number two right here. So we just kind of get our fingernails under there and, yep, there it is. It's come out. And you can see our screw there, it's another Torx screw. Okay, how do I get these off? Oh, hold on, you can see they move a little bit. So the tutorial I found online actually says that there's two clips on the ends here, so theoretically... Oh, look at that! No glue! Oh, that's sick! Check that out, guys. PowerBook 190. Oh, awesome. So really, I just need to do the same thing to this side, just pop it in here. GG easy, man. Let's go. So now we have access to all the screws. Try and look into where the screw is uh, broken, and we're definitely going to have to see what that's all about. But we'll figure that out in a moment. So now we just start unscrewing. And what's great is that I've only had to use one uh, set of screwdriver for the entire computer so far, which you cannot say about modern Apple computers. Or even other ones from this era, maybe. Sure, it's Torx, but at least it's only like one Torx screw. Now, is that even a screw I can access? Probably not. Oh, is this screen gonna come up with the bezel? No. Oh. Oh. Hello. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Okay. Looking to be a little bit of a situation, I guess. Because the screws, uh, especially for this bottom part, have just straight up sunken through and all the plastic surrounding them is destroyed. Okay. Motherboard feels like it wants to fall out. I can't close it. This is... Where the tutorial- this is where things are getting a little tricky. Look how badly that's gotten scratched from that. Oh, look at all those pieces that came off. Okay, this is good. We, we got the back off, so... I guess we can really have a look and see what happened in here. Okay, so what happened is that this broke off of here, which basically caused the hinge to stay forwards, and that pushed on the bezel, and that was what was pushing it out. So really, I just gotta turn this back up. So now... Yeah, so now that I've turned this back up, you can see that that immediately fixes a lot of things. Um, this is, this is a mess. This is an absolute mess. Actually, both of the, both of the hinges are stuffed now. How do I unplug this? Okay, we need to take off this cover. Okay, there we are. And uh, we pull this down. We can move this back here. Okay, at least I can sit in a little area of rest where it's not going to fall apart on us, and we'll, we'll take this off entirely. Lord, okay, this is where things get really tricky. Okay, that's that pulled up. Okay, and the screen has been disconnected. Good lord, alright. Well, that is something. So, there has been quite a bit of damage done inside this computer. Judging from all the parts that fell out, this right here is a thing, yeah, this is the thing that's used to hold on the speaker, which also fell out. Uh, all of the plastic here is just completely destroyed. I think, I think at this point it's still fixable as long as the 
display cable is not destroyed. There we go. That's the other side. Uh, and that's the second hinge, which, yeah, you can see it's just completely snapped off the uh, bezel. Now we're at a point where, you know, the, it's separate, we can clean all this up, we can really work on things individually, so we're making, we're making progress. There's a lot of more dust and crap that's fallen out, but we can really clean this properly. I'm actually going to disconnect the screen from the bezel, which will allow us to just glue stuff to the bezel without uh, too much concern of, like, messing up the screen. Oh, these are, these are green screws. Check this out, guys. Look at that. That is a green screw. That is really cool, actually. I like the look of that. We're going to put that in parts right here. Someone had to go in here and put masking tape on this screen as well. I, I love seeing stuff like that. Just things from the factory that you'd never, you'd never see otherwise. Now, what is the problem, guys? Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, it's just the buttons themselves, I think. Oh, yep, something snapped off. Okay, that looks to still be intact. Let's uh, just come back to an equilibrium right here. Okay, now let's focus a little bit more onto the bezel itself. So this side was pushed up quite a ways. And surprisingly enough, I don't even know how that like didn't snap. That is nuts, actually. So we've still got a working latch. That's good. So let's see, this part goes here. And where's the other side of the bezel? Here we are. This goes here. And we can clearly, very, very clearly see that these have been completely and utterly destroyed. Yep, that's the screw that we couldn't access. That's just, that just sits there now. Um, I don't know if I should unscrew it or not, but like, that is demolished. Ideally, you'd want to 3D print a part to fix these, but I do not have resources for that. See, the uh, actual thread itself has just fallen out of this little slot here. Which, I mean, an easy fix, I guess, would be to try super gluing that back in. Could I could maybe do that. All right, so we're going to be gluing these hinges back in. We just, you know, take these, chuck them here, and we're just going to super glue the hell out of them. Here I got my super glue, uh, the previous super glue that I used for the battery. Uh, we ran out of it doing the battery, so now we have this super glue. Well, that was dumb. Just a little friendly reminder to uh, glove up when using super glue. Don't ask me how I know. Okay, so where's this being glued? There. Uh, I'll probably just put the glue on the plastic and then we'll just shove this down. That should glue the hinge back on. Oh, there we go. Here we are. Yep, yep, this is how you super glue. And why not? We'll just uh, chuck some here. And the best way to keep things glued down is just to grab yourself a paperweight, something kind of useless, there we go. And we'll do the same for this side. What? Let's, yeah, let's do the same for this side. I was thinking of selling these Apple TVs, but you know what? Now that I'm using them to hold things down to glue, I might, I might keep these things around then. They're, they're kind of good paperweights. I know I've been crapping on Apple TVs quite a bit in this video, but <laughs> come on. They're a good punching bag. Mmm, smells like really toxic paint. Super glue. Once these hinges are done, we're gonna put the speaker back in here, and this is a little bracket that holds the speaker in. And this is actually the thing that was sticking out the front and the back of the hinge, so it was sitting this way while the hinge was going over it this way, uh, hence causing this. All right, so here we have the hinges. They're glued on. Uh, hopefully they're ready to go. Uh, they don't seem like they're gonna come off. Here is the screen assembly right here. We have the buttons to change the brightness and contrast. We have the speaker, the actual screen itself, and the cable, which we're gonna have to wrap around this one right here and plug it back in. I've cleaned this up nice and good, gotten into the corners where you usually can't really clean that well, and it's mostly clean. So we're gonna chuck this in. Here are these uh, beautiful looking green screws again. Just showing you for the last time before we chuck them in, never to be seen again. I wonder why they're green. That's a good question. Why are the screws green? Now, here's the speaker. The speaker was also has also fallen out and we need to get this bracket right here and put this back on. We also need to bend it back into shape. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that real quick. So if I rotate these the right way, I could maybe get them in, but the problem is they spin really fast and yeah, just it's more of a good luck kind of thing. Uh, I mean, I can get it most of the way there. Oh. Okay, that's one side in. Oh, that, that side just absolutely just clicked in. Alright, you know what? 
I'm gonna need something to hold on that because I've actually got that perfect right now. I actually got that perfect. Okay, I, I need something like small and weighty to go on that. As long as we get something in there, that's all that really matters. Guys, we have a mystery peg sitting here. This might just be what I need. Come on. Is that in? That's in. I think so. Yep. Awesome, look at that. Oh, now we're truly doing a DIY repair right here. Look at that. That's perfect, man. So once that dries up, we're gonna do it for the other side. Actually, you know what, let's just get another peg. I believe we could probably just put the put the peg on, glue it later. Yep, just like that. Oh, beautiful. This ain't dodgy repairs anymore. This is like professional repairs. Look at that. Getting the pegs out and stuff to hold it down. Okay, we just shove some super glue under there. Be sure not to glue the peg under and why not? We'll add some more to this one because I didn't get enough at the back. So pretty much once the speaker's glued back into place, we can pretty much start reassembling everything. That's pretty much the last thing I think I need to glue back on. So once the speaker's back on, we'll start rerouting the cables and stuff. Probably should have done that before. Ah, oh, no, that would have been too hard. Um, we'll start rerouting the cables, plug everything back in, make sure it still works, put it all together, and then we'll have a repaired computer. All right, let's route this around. So I think we're just gonna undo that. Oh no, I think I think we just go under like this. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. And then this part goes on here, and yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, this is gonna be a pain once we try and plug that back in. Oh, uh, actually, no, that would go under like that. And like that because, you know, it goes down, this is the bottom of the screen, it needs to plug in. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Alright, the moment has come. Now, we're gonna reassemble this computer. So, what a better place to start than... Hold on, we actually gonna do this the other way. What a better place to start than the screen. So what we need to do, this is the front of the screen, let me just make sure everything's sitting in there alright. So now, we just pretty much need to make sure we don't screw this up I guess like yeah like that that should do so we just put this back on I believe we just clip it or there's there's a way to do it I forget how yeah you just clip it back in some of the clips probably broke while I was trying to take it off which I would not be surprised in the slightest if that happened all right looking at this uh this this could be better um I think all the clips down here got absolutely demolished, but actually we haven't screwed this back in yet. Oh yeah, we haven't screwed it back in yet. Let's screw that back in. Hopefully it's going to uh, go in just fine. So to even this out, we're going to do one top one, and now we're going to do one bottom one. So let's chuck this in here. I believe this might be the one that we super glued in, so let's see if you can repair a thread with just super glue and no like 3D printed parts or something. So let's go very careful. We gotta be very careful not to over tighten it or else it will absolutely demolish it once again. Okay, we're not gonna go any more tighter than that. Okay, let's do this top one here now. I know the, the footage is a little bad, but I'm also just trying to check and actually see if it's in the right spot. At times camera quality may be compromised a little bit. Uh, don't think that's going in. That is 100% not going in. All right, let's let's take this out before we destroy anything, which we most likely have. Okay, I actually think this one might be the one that we glued back in. So let's be very careful screwing this one back in. Oh, could you imagine if I screw if I glued it in backwards? I think I did. No way. I think I glued that in backwards, guys. Because that, my friends, is not going in. That's actually fighting it. Oh no, it just needs a bit of force. You just gotta push in a little bit. All right, we'll try one more time, and this time I'm gonna keep the housing down. I think that's the problem, is that it's just pushing the housing up as I'm trying to screw it in. I mean, it's not the best quality of repair. Uh, we are actually gonna have to screw this in lower because the PowerBook logo is simply not going to go on if we keep it like this, so. I cannot believe that's actually screwing in. Yeah, this this definitely is the one that I glued back in, and that is most likely just spinning in there. You know, I think that should be alright. Um, it's not the best repair, it is a little, um, 
yeah, that is getting a little bit loose. Honestly, why don't we see how the power book badge goes on? If it goes on flush, we leave it. If it doesn't, then we will have to glue it. Okay, it's settled. The logo went on flush. Uh, there's a bit of glue still on here. We could probably fix that. The logo went on flush. We're going to keep it this way. Uh, if it ever comes part of the future, at least I know how to fix it. And to be fair, it's not too bad of a teardown. So we put the Macintosh logo back in. That one just slips in. Thank you for not using sticky ones. Thank you. These have aged super well because of it. Look at that. They just slot in so effortlessly. That is how you put screws under these things. You don't put adhesive under them. Adhesive just ruins them. This is such a better approach. Good job. Okay, well, that's looking pretty good. It's not the most stable thing in the world. Could be better. Um, but, yeah. Eh, here's what it is, I guess. Welcome to the scariest part of this video. This is where I see if the computer still works, and if my repairs were successful. It's also where we start plugging these fragile ribbon cables back in. Ugh. Alright. So, I, after looking back on the footage, this came off from the bottom, like so. Hold on. Yeah, this came off the bottom, like so. Plugged in like that, which makes sense. That's how it was wanting to sit anyway, so. And you know what, as it opens and closes, it will kind of go like that. Makes sense. Now, we need to actually put the lid back onto the body. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, as of how I'm going to do this, I have no idea. But we really just go and shove this back in. That's what we pretty much do, I guess. Realistically speaking, I'm just going to put uh, this thing on here. Just going to be mindful of the ribbon cable that goes on like that. Okay, so now I gotta find a way to... Okay, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. Alright, this is gonna be fun. Now, if it can't handle me turning them, like if the hinges snap back off, then this repair is gonna be a failure with the super glue. But if it can withstand it, then it's gonna be able to withstand being opened and closed. So, this test is gonna suck just a little bit. I will give it some, po some support right here. We're just gonna turn that. Wait, did I turn it the right way? Let's make sure I turned it the right way. I turned it the wrong way, okay. Sorry, even more pain must ensue because we gotta now pull it. Okay, we're gonna have to pull it like this. Yeah, so that we can put it on closed. The fact that I don't have confidence doing this means that the repair might not be as successful as I thought. And actually everything sits way more naturally now. And I think this is kind of the intended way it's meant to sort of go on. Okay, we t actually we take this, we wrap it around underneath here. Good Lord. And then we just, line it up like this. I'm not ready to be honest to destroy the screen so we're just gonna get a little cloth, microfiber cloth, we're just gonna chuck it over everything just to protect the screen so it doesn't absolutely get scratched or demolished in this process. Now's the fun part, let's get this on. Okay we're gonna make sure that the ribbon cable is tight, gotta bring this back, okay one side in, second side in, okay now, where are my display? Here they are. So here are the screws that we use for the display. I'm going to do the ribbon cable one first. Go for number two. All right, everyone, everyone. How does the hinge go? So let's be very careful. Oh, that's, that does not give me confidence. But, it's doing it. The hinge has passed the very first test. If we go down to the problematic area from before, that's flat now. The hinge is not sticking out. It seems to work. That's spooky part number one out of the way. Spooky part number two, plugging in the display. And now we test our way, hold on, I have to plug in the keyboard still. Right. So I just realized I can't turn it on without the keyboard. Now I've got no idea how to actually put this back. Oh no, if we just do this, then where is the other side? And now we chuck on this side, which should be a lot easier. Yeah, easy, GG easy. Now uh, we got to put this back in, which is the hard drive. 
trackpad goes in first. I hate ribbon cables where you have to pull the latch up and then put the thing down onto it and then latch it down onto it. It's just, it's just so counterintuitive. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Even I can't see what's going on. Well, you can't see, but if I push this down onto the thing to latch it on, the actual latch will go back down and latch nothing, which is the most annoying part of trying to go down on ribbon cables like this. It just works against you. So now, once you get it in there, you have to be really careful and just shove it down. You just shove it down. Okay, we've almost got it in. That's about as good as you're gonna get it. The final piece of the puzzle, the keyboard. And getting into these ribbon cables here are gonna be ridiculous. So I don't even know how I'm gonna even attempt this. We're just gonna try doing the exact same thing I tried to do with the trackpad. Uh, my, my, my tools are too thick for this. They are dummy thick. Okay, one, two, okay. Let's just, let's just put a microfiber cloth over the screen so we don't scratch it. You blindfold the victim when you're doing open heart surgery. It's really hard to figure out if you've actually got it in. Trying to go down with the ribbon cable just pushes the latch down. Like the ribbon cable just pushes the latch down, then you're gonna have to try and open it all over again. There are people who can do this like blindfold. Oh, no, no, that's in. Okay, at least one, okay, one side of it is in. Ribbon cable number one, without a doubt, is in. This one's a little closer, so it should be, yep, yeah, there we are. We got it. Keep that tight. Okay, okay, nearly done, nearly done. It's latched, it latched, everyone. There is so much stuff just moving around inside the computer, but finish it off. We take this and we are going to screw this back in. I forgot about this completely. The floppy drive, gonna plug this back in too. Dude, it's been three days. This took me three days to do. Actually, I think four. I've, I've lost count at this point. Okay, here it is. The laptop reassembled. For now, the hinge is working. The battery is now no longer an active explosive. <sighs> and now it's time to turn it on to see if it still works. <clears throat> Apple. So here we have a PowerBook 190. This is what I just repaired. As you can see, the hinge on it works perfectly now. It's it's a little temperamental, but it is only put on with super glue because I don't know what else to use except for a 3D printer, which I do not have. And look at this, the trackpad button, it clicks perfectly. And the trackpad, you can't push in anymore. Well, I wouldn't try pushing on it, that was a bad idea. So, why don't we plug it in and see if it still works. Plug it into the wall outlet. There's the adapter. Y'all ready? In three, two, one. Hey, there we go. Hard drive still works, but there's no boot up chime yet. Did this ever have a boot up chime? Good question. Yoink that out. And now it's turned off. Does this actually have a sensor in here to like know when to shut off or did I just break it? Well, that was a bit anticlimactic. So in its current state, it just randomly decided to die. The whole system is just dead. Like it was on and then it just shut off. And now all you can hear is some slight clicking from inside the computer whenever it's plugged in. I don't know what caused it. I have no idea why the entire system died, because it quite literally turned on after I fixed it, but then it just died out of nowhere. So I don't know what to do, however I did achieve the goal that I originally set out to do, and that was to be able to close the lid of this computer so I can, well, store it, I guess. If I can ever find a way to make this thing work. I'll definitely do an update video on this, but for now, I mean, cosmetically, I did a 
pretty good job getting the hinge and the um, trackpad button to work, so... We've got that, I guess. We got so, so close that this computer just couldn't keep up. I honestly think this thing was a ticking time bomb regardless, because quite frankly, for it to just die like that, out of nowhere, signifies that this thing has much worse problems. Probably all the corrosion from the battery exploding, this was a sad laptop either way. But I understand if you guys all came to see a working computer instead of a dead laptop at the end of this. So allow me to show you this. This thing is way more chunky than this thing, but they're actually pretty similar. This right here is a PowerBook 3400. And while it's very similar to the laptop that I attempted to repair, it is a much, much better laptop. By the way, uh, let's just take a look at the battery on this because that, that is what a non-exploded battery looks like. See, notice the lack of corrosion and damage. These are actually really similar computers, except I believe that this one was more of a higher end model compared to this one. And you can sort of see that they share a lot of similarities, except this one's just bigger and better and, uh, well, it has a color screen and among other differences. Yeah. All right, so let's plug it in. And it just turns on, I don't even need to press the power button. And check that out, we got ourselves a Happy Mac. See, we did get a Happy Mac in the end, and we've got Mac OS 8.6. Wait a second. This has a CD drive? I didn't even know that. Dude, I've never opened it, it's so dusty in here. Huh, check that out, it's got a CD drive. How nice. So, uh, you know, what can we do with this thing? Well, you know, the sound works. Which is always great. Um, I actually have a little document here. If you've ever listened to the uh, album OK Computer, you might recognize what uh, this is. Better, happier, more productive, comfortable, not drinking too much. So yeah, you can just do nifty little programs, you know, make your Mac talk and stuff. I'll go into more detail about, you know, just trying to use the system, probably in its own video. This is me just trying to salvage this video after that computer over there just decided to just die on me. So, I mean, I suppose I better show you guys the battery uh, powers of this thing. See, unplugged and it's still on. On battery, not plugged in and it still works and it's about to die. So I'm gonna plug it back in before it does die. Okay, there we go. It's like pulling a fish out of water. This is definitely one of the videos that I've made. And there you have it. That's been my attempted repair of a PowerBook 190. It may have just stopped working out of absolutely nowhere, but it's an absolute benefit to me that this thing closes it all, which means I'll actually be able to put it away. Maybe one day I'll be able to get this thing to work again, but for now, yeah, it is what it is. My name is Frogfordock. You can say that however you like. I really don't care. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.